Hey guys and welcome to the show. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can go past the default, I think it's 12 alarms that Game Maker Studio gives you. Let's see, add event, alarm, 0 to 11, yeah, there's 12 of them. So what happens if in your game for some reason you're using all of these and you need one more or n many more alarms? Um, this video is going to help you create as many as you want. So let's quickly run into what we've got here in sprites. I've got these guys, alarm one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to be creating five custom alarms, and it's going to have some sort of timer, perhaps a second or two. When that timer elapses, it's going to create a notification that has one of these uh, sub images of these sprites over here, which is quite straightforward. I've got a script to go ahead and create the correct notification. So we pass into it an argument. So I'm going to say, okay, I want to create the first uh, notification. So I can pass a one into here, and because the image indexes of a sprite are zero based, it first starts at zero, one, two, three, four. And that's how we'll get the correct frame. Coming back to the script, making sure that I'm destroying any other notifications there are in the area, and then I'm going ahead and creating a new notification at the center of the screen on the instances layer, and that's the object. Object notification doesn't have anything fancy, it just makes sure that the image speed is set to zero so it doesn't flick between the sub images. And here we go, we're giving it the sprite and the image index. Very straightforward stuff. So let's go into objects, create an object. This is going to be, I'm going to call it a controller of some sort. It doesn't have a sprite. Let's give it a create event over here. I'm going to say alarm one equals room speed times two, which will be the same as saying alarm one equals room speed times two. Okay, so notice the syntaxes. This is just a variable. In this case, I'm telling the system that I want to execute what's in alarm one when this time elapses. In this case, it's going to be two seconds from speed times two. This is what we're trying to reproduce. And I'm going to go ahead and copy some more of these. Let's do five, two, three, four, five. And let's put them in increments of two seconds, two, four, six, eight and ten seconds it'll do alarm five cool i'm gonna add an event step event and the syntax is pretty straightforward well if alarm one is greater than zero then i want to decrease one from alarm one every step and if alarm one is less than or equal to zero well then this is going to be execute some code and this will only ever be executed once because as soon as we get to here and the alarm is decremented to where the code is executed it'll never be able to get back into this top if statement on the next iteration of the step counter now the cool thing about the statement is it can actually be simplified even further for example we can do if alarm one is greater than zero okay so that's that first guy the same and here I can decrease alarm one by one and then determine if it's uh, less than or equal to zero check that out so we've just combined all three of these lines into one this top line is done by this because by the rules of boolean and short circuiting if this fails it'll never get here which is really great and because of that, this won't decrease by one if this uh, fails. And here we got a minus minus alarm one here. We're decreasing it by one. Standard C-like syntax for decrementing a variable, you know, before you actually uh, retrieve its value. So in this case, I'm doing that before I'm seeing if it's less than or equal to zero. So this guy is this line over here. So this part is the first part. This minus minus alarm one is this here and less than equal to zero is this if over there. So just like that, we can eliminate all that and get to a simple one-liner. Cool stuff. So let's copy this and let's paste it to three, four, five. Let's get rid of that weird indentation. Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. And instead of execute some code, I'm going to say SCR create notification. And this is going to be notification one for alarm one. 
and this is going to be 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. 2 and 3, 4, 5. Simple as that. And here we go, we have our own custom alarm. In our create, we tell it how many seconds we want by timesing the amount of time in seconds by the room speed. And in the step event, we just say, OK, execute this line of code. And in doing so, it'll check if the time is still active. It'll decrease the time by one unit if it isn't. And then after it's decreased by one unit, it'll determine if it's now elapsed. Let's go ahead and place this controller in our game world. Controller instances. Uh, we can put it anyway, it doesn't matter. Very good. Back to this. Let's close this out. Let's close our RM game world. And let's go ahead and save and run our game. Okay, so two seconds should be there, alarm one. Another two seconds should be alarm two. Another two seconds should be three. Another two seconds should be four. The last two seconds, 10 seconds after we started the game, is alarm five. And each one of these has only been executed once, created one notification or in your case one piece of code that needs to be executed after x many seconds so i hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful please feel free to comment rate and subscribe the project files are in the description if you want more videos like this smaller ones shorter ones things that you have on your mind but you don't know how to do please let me know in the comments below or send me a pm if you like what i'm doing here please check out my patreon i really do appreciate your support so until next time happy coding and i'll see you then